Hello. It's been a while. Haven't recorded anything or streamed at all in quite a while. I think I've only used the webcam at all really for one video. But we're here. It's almost Halloween. Halloween's in a few days. It is almost late at night. <laughs> but I've had this game in my library, my Steam library, for quite a while now. It's called Dagon. It seems to be a point-and-click adventure slash visual novel kind of thing. Probably sounded really weeby. Don't look at my don't look at my background. We're chilling, big chilling. Sorry that you're like directly in front of me. I would have it more to the side, but the court isn't long enough to do that. So that's great. But anyway. This is a game about H.P. Lovecraft and all that kind of eldritch fun. So I, hopefully I've been tinkering with the sound settings for a bit. Hopefully things sound good. And I don't really know anything about this game, but it looks interesting. I think it actually just fully released today. There's a few DLCs as you can see over here on the right. I don't know what Tales of Herring Great Lake is. Rake. Oopsie. Oh, oh you can see my cat. Don't mind that blue thing right there. That's the cat bed. I just stuck it there. He doesn't like it. It's a shame. Anywho, this is a pretty short game, I believe. So let's get going. Dagon is a faithful looks inter. <laughs> Dagon is a faithful, interactive adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's work, focused on story and atmosphere. You will not find difficult choices, action sequences, or inventory management here and movement is limited to progressing through locations along with the plot. I am writing this under an appreciable mental strain, since by tonight I shall be no more. Oh, okay. During the game you will encounter interactive elements. Some of them will allow you to continue your journey, others reveal interesting facts about the original short story, its historical background, and the author. Alright, it's a little dot in question. Some of the trivia is hidden. In order to find these screens, focus your eyes and look for the elder sign. You can also access all of the found facts later. They will be available in the main menu. Okay, so I didn't know this was fully, at least, whatever. We'll figure it out. Um, I guess it says there's multiple short stories that it's based off of. I don't know a whole lot about HP Lovecraft. I don't know why I'm looking to the left here. I'm looking at my freaking face on the viewfinder gotta look at you you oh, love you or something platonically anywho <laughs> back to the game i cannot move hopefully that's supposed to be correct penniless and at the end of my supply of the drug which alone makes life endurable i can bear the torture no longer and shall cast myself from this garret window into the squalid street below. Do not think from my slavery to morphine that I am a weakling or a degenerate. When you have read these hastily scrawled pages, you may guess, though never fully realize why it is that I must have forgetfulness or death. Interesting start. It's raining a lot. Something I wish happened here. That's great. I, I know these things are here. I'm just looking around a little bit. Yeah, whatever. I'll just keep going. It was in one of the most open and least frequented parts of the broad Pacific that the packet of which I was supercargo fell a victim to the German Sea Raider. Oh, I'm on a boat too. Let's go. Anything else? No? Right. The Great War was then at its very beginning and the ocean forces of the Hun had not completely sunk to their later degradation. So that our vessel was made a legitimate prize 
whilst we of her crew were treated with all the fairness and consideration due us as naval prisoners. Okey No, I just realized that there was the second thing on the table that we didn't get to look at. I'm looking here. I gotta stop. I gotta... Out of sight. There was that second thing on the table that had the elder sign, which is for trivia, and kind of I guess we missed it, which is a bit of a bummer. Already missing out on something. Uh, this is a lot different graphically than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be something like I want to say Franbo, but that is not at all the analogy I'm trying to make. I didn't expect it to look at anything like Franbo. Franbo's really stylistic. Um, but anyway. We're here now, whatever. It's in the past. <laughs> Alright, the Huns were Central Asian nomads who established a dominion in Europe and invaded the Roman Empire in the 5th century AD. They were known as brutal, deadly warriors and masters of quick raids who also developed powerful composite bows, lassos, and early siege weapons. During World War I, the British used the word Huns as a synonym for Germans in order to emphasize their brutality. However, the team However, the term originated when the German Emperor Wilhelm II, the Tust, gave a speech to his troops on the 27th of July of 1900, before they embarked to China. Should you encounter the enemy, he will be defeated. No quarter will be given. Prisoners will not be taken. Whoever falls into your hands is forfeited. Just as thousands of years ago- oh my god, I'm really bad at reading, dude. Covid- and I did that again! Christ! I'm so bad at this. Wait, am I allowed to say the funny word? The funny little year vacation we've been having? Really did a number on me and my literacy skills. Um, just as a thousand years ago, the Huns under their king Attila made a name for themselves. One that even today makes, the seem, makes them seem mighty in history and legend. May the name German be affirmed by you in such a way in China that no Chinese will ever again dare to look cross-eyed at a German. The refusal to take prisoners was a clear breach of the laws and the customs of war adopted during the first Hague Convention of 1899. Okay, so the Huns were these brutal poggers dudes. I almost looked that way again. The Huns were some brutal poggers dudes and their people were like, oh, let's call the German the Huns because they're so brutal. And Germany's like, lol, or something. And anyway. Ha ha ha. On here. So liberal, indeed, was the discipline of our captors, that five days after we were taken, I managed to escape alone, in a small boat, with water and provisions for a good length of time. How oh, nice. Do I click it? Or do I? Hello? Any trivia? Nope. Alright. Click. The yummies. That when I finally trivia? found myself adrift and free, I had but little idea of my surroundings. Yeah, honestly, getting stuck out here in a little boat, not the best. Even if you're free, you're not really free. You're at the will of the sea. None of this. Is that a dog? Or a seagull? Never a competent navigator. I could only guess vaguely by the sun and stars that I was somewhat south of the equator. Nice, got some astronomy. I looked left. My bad. Got some astronomy going on. Um. Not only is that not the sun, but. It's just again. It's like a seal or something. Of the longitude, I knew nothing and no island or coastline was in sight. It's really scary. The thought of just endless- oh, hello. Just endless water as far as the eye can see. It's horrible. The weather kept fair, and for uncounted days I drifted aimlessly beneath the scorching sun, waiting either for some passing ship or to be cast on the shores of some habitable land. Hello? Oh. Alright, anything else to click? Oh my god. What just happened? But neither ship nor land appeared. 
and I began to despair in my solitude upon the heaving vastness of unbroken blue. The change happened whilst I slept. Its details I shall never know. For my slumber, though troubled and dream infested, was continuous. <sighs> Okay. Why did I come out with that? I was gonna be like, okay? You know, like the funny, but. I guess that works too. What is happening? I was about to ask, like, what does this have to do with Lovecraft? Because I haven't read any of this, his funky little stuff, but. <sighs> Got right into the mix. Hello. When at last I awoke. It was to discover myself half sucked into a slimy expanse of hellish black mire, which extended about me in monotonous undulations as far as I could see. It's horrible. And in which my boat lay grounded some distance away. Though one might well imagine that my first sensation would be of wonder at so prodigious and unexpected a transformation of scenery, I was in reality more horrified than astonished. For there was in the air, and in the rotting soil, a sinister quality which chilled me to the very core. This is soil? The is region was putrid with the carcasses of decaying fish, and of other, less describable things which I saw protruding from the nasty mud of the unending plain. Yeah, like whatever that is. Or... Oh, hello. He's up, he's up upside down. Perhaps I should not hope to convey in mere words the unutterable hideousness that can dwell in absolute silence and barren immensity. There was nothing within hearing and nothing in sight save a vast reach of black slime. Yet the very completeness of the stillness and the homogeneity of the landscape oppressed me with a nauseating fear. Because there's just a singular little irregular ass fish here. <gasps> oh my god, is that an isopod? No way. Can I zoom in? No. Sag. The sun was blazing down from a sky which seemed to me almost black in its cloudless cruelty, as though reflecting the inky marsh beneath my feet. Oh. Click, clicky. Okay, so don't click that yet. Anything else? Okay. Trivia time. The Origins of Dagon. Dagon seems to be inspired by Fishhead, a short novel by Irvin S. Cobb Sorry. <laughs> about unnatural affinities between a hybrid idiot okay, and the strange fish of an isolated lake. Supernatural horror in literature H.P. Lovecraft. In Lovecraft's dream about a strange island emerging from the ocean and him crawling in the ooze that covered its surface. Okay, so this is Dagon, which makes sense because the game is called Dagon. Awesome. So we are just covering one story, and I guess the DLC has to do with the other stories. Okay, that's pretty cool. So it's just a nice little demo of what's to come. Strange island emerging from the ocean. I dreamed that whole hideous crawl, and yet can feel the ooze sucking me down in defense of Dagon, H.P. Lovecraft. Lovecraft's interest in the topic stemmed from his aversion to fish and sea smells. <laughs> in his own words, I have hated fish and feared the sea and everything connected with it since I was two years old, but I cannot recall what early experience gave me such a profound and lasting aversion to the sea and seafood. The Dweller in Darkness, Lovecraft, 1927, Donald Landre. Who the hell Donald? I can't zoom in. Hello. Hello, friendo. Give him a little tickle. You know, if I saw a nice little pot in real life, I would shit my pants, but, you know. The concept of them. What are you? I don't get it. I just, uh, uh, I didn't like that. As I crawled into the stranded boat, I realized that only one theory could explain my position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's that? 
Hello. Nice up pod. Big fish. Is that just a nautilus or something? Is that the other spiral things are? I couldn't see the separation between the shell and the the noodle. That one's going crazy over there. Alright, sorry, I'll go on with it. Through some unprecedented volcanic upheaval, a portion of the ocean floor must have been thrown to the surface, exposing regions for which innumerable millions of years had lain hidden under unfathomable watery depths. So great was the extent of the new land which had risen beneath me that I could not detect the faintest noise of the surging ocean, straining my ears as I might, nor were there any sea fowl to prey upon the dead things. It's actually really interesting. So the the deep sea just rose, the ground just rose to the top layer of the ocean. So the, ocean, the entire ocean is just replaced by this giant pit of mud with all these deep sea animals and creatures. And that thing is just breathing over there. That's so cool. That's just great. Great Odesio Koitsu. For several hours, I sat thinking or brooding in the boat, oh, which God. lay upon its side and afforded a slight shade as the sun moved across the heavens. Yeah. As the day progressed, the ground lost some of its stickiness and seemed likely to dry sufficiently for traveling purposes in a short time. That night, I slept but little. And the next day, I made for myself a pack containing food and water, preparatory to an overland journey in search of the vanished sea and possible rescue. It's a really cool shot right there. I really like that with the moon and the tentacles. That's so cool. Um, I don't like whatever's behind the boat. All right, uh, only click on that. Cool. On the third morning. I found the soil dry enough to walk upon with ease. Is that an animal or is that just like a stone pillar and it's rebar coming out? <laughs> I can't tell. The odor of the fish was maddening, but I was too much concerned with graver things to mind so slight an evil and set out boldly for an unknown goal. Say less, let's... Walk on the ocean, stone ocean. All day ocean. I forged steadily westward, guided by a faraway hummock which rose higher than any other elevation on the rolling desert. <laughs> yeah, that's what you did. How does he just know that he's at a higher elevation than the rolling desert? But I think more importantly, what the hell this thing is, and that, like... Okay, this is getting to be like... That one scene in the new Godzilla movie, where they just go into a portal and don't explain why there's a giant monkey land, or something? No, yeah. No? Yeah, there's a giant monkey land, and it was like, part of it, the sky was also the ground and so in the middle there's like a gravitational shift where you could like jump up high enough and then whoop you go up the bottom i mean down the whatever and they just didn't explain it maybe i just don't know the godzilla lore he just gets an axe for some reason some super monkey powered axe but whatever i call hacks ha <laughs> axe and hacks i hate this <laughs> is that a whale Oh, let's go. Whales are awesome. These appendages are not, though. I'm not a fan of that. I'll just keep walking. That night, I encamped, and on the following day still traveled toward the hummock, though that object seemed scarcely nearer than when I had first espied it. Oh, my stupid? Is he talking about the gigantic hill right here? Is that what a hummock is? I think it might be. This is a Leviathan for sure. <coughs> My bad. I saw that peek the mic. 
by the fourth evening, I attained the base of the mound, which turned out to be much higher than it had appeared from a distance. It's not too bad. It's a good day's climb. An intervening valley setting it out in sharper relief from the general surface. Too weary to ascend, I slept in the shadow of the hill. I know not why my dreams were so wild that night, but ere the waning and fantastically gibbous moon had risen far above the eastern plain, I was awake in a cold perspiration, determined to sleep no more. I really like this scenery here. Such visions as I had experienced were too much for me to endure again. And in the glow of the moon, I saw how unwise I had been to travel by day. Without the glare of the parching sun, my journey would have cost me less energy. Indeed, I now felt quite able to perform the ascent which had deterred me at sunset. Picking up my pack, I started for the crest of the eminence. Awesome. Can I? Oh, oh I have to actually pick up my pack. So, I have gonna, said that yeah. the unbroken monotony of the rolling plain was a source of vague horror to me. But I think my horror was greater when I gained the summit of the mound and looked down the other side into an immeasurable pit or canyon, whose black recesses the moon had not yet soared high enough to illumine. Can I? Oh, okay. I'm not allowed to see yet. I felt myself on the edge of the world, peering over the rim into a fathomless chaos of eternal night. Yeah. Through my terror <laughs> okay. ran curious reminiscences of Paradise Lost. <gasps> I was going to read that book. And of Satan's hideous climb through the unfashioned realms of darkness. As the moon climbed higher in the sky, I began to see that the slopes of the valley were not quite so perpendicular as I had imagined. Oh. Oh, can't see. Ledges and outcroppings of rock afforded fairly easy footholds for a descent. Whilst That's after horrible. a drop of only a few hundred feet, the declivity became very gradual. Let's go down here. This is smart. Genius. Urged on by an impulse which I cannot definitely analyze, I scrambled with difficulty down the rocks and stood on the gentler slope beneath, gazing into the Stygian deeps where no light had yet penetrated. All at once, my attention was captured by a vast and singular object on the opposite slope, which rose steeply about a hundred yards ahead of me. An object that gleamed whitely in the newly bestowed rays of the ascending moon. I still can't tell if this is supposed to be a dream or if he's just wilding out here. That it was merely a gigantic piece of stone, I soon assured myself. But I was conscious of a distinct impression that its contour and position were not altogether the work of nature. A closer scrutiny filled me with sensations I cannot express. For despite its enormous magnitude, and its position in an abyss which had yawned at the bottom of the sea since the world was young, I perceived beyond a doubt that the strange object was a well-shaped monolith whose massive bulk had known the workmanship and perhaps the worship of living and thinking creatures. Dazed and frightened, yet not without a certain thrill of the scientist's or archaeologist's delight, I examined my surroundings more closely. Anything else? I'm surprised there's no creatures down here. The knock on wood. The moon, Why? now near the zenith, shone weirdly and vividly above the towering steeps that hemmed in the chasm. And 
revealed the fact that a far-flung body of water flowed at the bottom, winding out of sight in both directions and almost lapping my feet as I stood on the slope. Across the chasm, the wavelets washed the base of the Cyclopean monolith, on whose surface I could now trace both inscriptions and crude sculptures. Sorry, that was a yawn. The writing was in a system of hieroglyphics unknown to me and unlike anything I'd ever seen in books. Consisting for the most part of conventionalized aquatic symbols such as fishes, eels, octopi, crustaceans, mollusks, whales, and the like. Did plural fish used to be fishes? Or is it just... Is he just cringe? Several characters obviously represented marine things which are unknown to the modern world. But whose decomposing forms I had observed on the ocean risen plain. It was the pictorial carving, however, that did most to hold me spellbound. Storytelling methods. Dagon contains many themes and storytelling methods that Lovecraft developed in his later works, such as telling the story through carvings, the Mounds of Madness, and the Nameless City. Should I be knowing this stuff? I mean, I know he's incredibly well known, and his works are super interesting and revolutionary. But I do not know anything about anything here. Journals and characters notes the shadow out of time, the haunter of the dark. Islands emerging from the ocean, the call of Cthulhu. Is that what? No. It's like the fish. Fish bitch. Fictional beings and deities based on real events and mythologies. Me go and the whisperer of darkness. In darkness, my bad. It's also considered the origin of the path. The popular Cthulhu mythos. I'm, I'm illiterate and stuttering. Christ. Some of the Lovecraft's other stories also conclude in a manner similar to Dagon, but let's skip the details in order not to spoil that ending. So it's definitely... is that Cthulhu right there? I can see a little. This looks like he has buff arms. He shredded. He did not skip arm day. What's going on up here? Is that a turtle? A turtle? Thought ahead. There's that thing. There's the thing with a bunch of eyes. Another thing with a bunch of eyes. Unless it's just like six separate eels clinging together. Oh, there's a turtle. And an orange. Anyway. Um. So, what are these at the bottom? That's just an octopus. That's one, uh, the one on the right, I've seen one of those before. Is that squid, I'm assuming? And isopod? And then there's this bad boy, the fucking gaster blasters from Sands. <laughs> My Undertale. Only visible My bad. To be in water on account of their enormous size. Sorry, were an array of bass reliefs whose subjects would have excited the envy of a Dore. I didn't read that or pay attention. Plainly visible across the intervening water. On account of their enormous size, there were an array of bass reliefs whose subjects would have excited the envy of a Dore. Okay, the reading it didn't help much. I think that these things were supposed to depict men, at least a certain sort of men. Though the creatures were shown disporting like fishes in the waters of some marine grotto. Mermaids. Or paying homage at some monolithic shrine, which appeared to be under the waves as well. Of their faces and forms, I dare not speak in detail. For the mere remembrance makes me grow faint. Grotesque beyond the imagination of a Poe or a Bulwer. I mean, this dude's just having a bad day. Don't gotta be that mean to him. This guy up here, that's like a CAT scan of a brain or something. This dude. Ate three toxic waste candies at once. 
Um, this guy plays Genshin on the bottom, anyway. They were damnably human in general outline, despite webbed hands and feet, shockingly wide and flabby lips, glassy, bulging eyes, and other features less pleasant to recall. Curiously enough, they seem to have been chiseled badly out of proportion with their scenic background. For one of the creatures was shown in the act of killing a whale, represented as but little larger than himself. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm sure that's how it was. I remarked, as I say, their grotesqueness and strange size. Okay, but... Oh, I can't look at it again. The mermaid, mer lads were big chillin' in front of the monolith, which is big, it's definitely big, but it didn't seem like it was that insanely big, like as a, big as a whale? But in a moment Unless decided that they were merely the imaginary gods of some primitive fishing or seafaring tribe. Some tribe whose last descendant had perished eras before the first ancestor of the Piltdown or Neanderthal man was born. I'm not liking that there's a body of water right here. I'm not a fan of this. Awestruck at this unexpected glimpse into a past beyond the conception of the most daring anthropologist. Okay. This makes more sense. So my head's if my noggin's about right here. What the hell? It's glowing over there. Anyway. If my noggin is like right there. And it goes all the way up here. That's pretty big. I take it back. I stood musing whilst the moon cast queer reflections on the silent channel before me. Then suddenly I saw it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. With only a slight churning to mark its rise to the surface, the thing slid into view above the dark waters. Oh, God. <laughs> it darted like a Dude, man, shredded. Sorry for, like, talking over that, but oh my God, dude. Not only was I not expecting horror, Man shredded! What's your regime, dude? Christ. If you was like and loathsome some dark like a stupendous monster of nightmares to the moon. About which it flung its gigantic scaly arms, the while it bowed its hideous head and gave vent to certain measured sounds. I think I went mad then. Of my frantic ascent of the slope and cliff. And of my delirious journey back to the stranded boat, I remember little. Uh, uh, uh. Go, get up, home. I believe I sang a great deal and laughed oddly when I was unable to sing. Indistinct recollections of a great storm sometime after I reached the boat. At any rate, I know that I heard pearls of thunder and other tones which nature utters only in her wildest moods. When I came out of the shadows, I was in a San Francisco hospital. I oh, love that place, dude. Brought thither by the captain of the American ship which had picked up my boat in mid-ocean. In my delirium, I had said much, but found that my words had been given scant attention. Of any land upheaval in the Pacific, my rescuers knew nothing, nor did I deem it necessary to insist upon a thing which I knew they could not believe. The journalist. Lovecraft was a prominent figure in the world of the amateur journalism. In 1955. In 1915, he started publishing his own journal called The Conservative, which
which included political and social commentary, poetry, short stories, and literary criticism written by him and other authors. Howard was a skilled wordsmith, but he also took criticisms to heart, which resulted in his decision to step away from writing poetry and concentrate on weird fiction again for the first time since his teenage years. Dagon, published in 1919, is one of the short stories written during that period. In this example excerpt from The Conservative, the master of horror fiction explains his attitude toward warfare and the idea of world peace. So is talking about Howard or Lovecraft? Wait, his name is HP. Is his name Howard? Howard Periwinkle or some shit? Sorry for all those HP ins out there. I'm not the biggest stan. Why any sane human being can believe in the possibility of universal peace is more than the conservative can fathom. Should the entire civilized world agree simultaneously to disarm, one or more nations would undoubtedly retain secret armaments and at the proper time take advantage of their more altruistic and less astute contemporaries in a wild career of conquest against unarmed victims. No country is or ever can be above warfare until the basic impulses of the human animal shall have miraculously changed. Kind of based, in fact. Truers. Can I go to Japantown? That'd be sick. Jesus. Once I sought out a celebrated ethnologist and amused him with peculiar questions regarding the ancient Philistine legend of Dagon, the fish Dagon. god. My bad, Dagon. I've been calling it Dagon the whole time. Dagon, the fish god, I see. Is that what he looks like? He looks like a Chad. Anything else? Also, what's an ethnology? Oh. I got two options! Oh, never mind. It's a trivia one. Okay. Dagon was the main deity of the Philistines, worshipped throughout... The Philistines are like the... Never mind. I don't know. <laughs> I recognize the word. Dagon was the main deity of the Philistines, worshipped throughout the Middle East as the ancient god of fertility and crops. In Hebrew, the word Dagon was a common noun for grain. The rulers of Akkad, Mesopotamia, chose him as the patron saint of their war conquests. He also appeared as the judge of the dead in an Assyrian poem in an underworld prison warder in one of the Babylonian texts. This guy is all over the place, dude. That's crazy. He's often mistakenly taken for a fish god due to the wrong interpretation of his name. As in Hebrew, the word deg means fish. In H. P. Lovecraft's work, Dagon is an underwater deity ruling over the Deep Ones, a humanoid race with fish traits that resides in the oceans. He is worshipped by a secret cult called the Esoteric Order of Dagon. It's really cool. All this lore stuff is really interesting. Hearing the history of the deities and the cultures. But soon perceiving that he was hopelessly conventional, I did not press my inquiries. Yeah. Oops. Oh, no way. This is a nice room, by the way. I'd shit my pants if I was in here. It looks terrifying to be alone in. What is it? It kind of like launches me to the... Oh, if I go full circle, it's just makes me yeah great Dude, what is this oh the ne oh oh my god are you are you hiding from me the marketer lovecraft's attempts to find a job in 1925 were influenced yeah by advice he received from friends among others he started freelancing for a marketing magazine uh, where he would write announcements and commercials feel free to judge his copywriting skills for yourself from an ad for Curtis Woodwork. Curtis Woodwork embraces both the usual structural units and the cleverest contrivances, contrivances of built-in or permanent furniture, such as bookcases, dressers, buffets, and cupboards. Every model is conceived and created with the purest art, ripest scholarship, and mellowest craftsmanship, craftsmanship which energetic enterprise can command. 
and made to conform rigidly to the architecture of each particular type of home. The cost, concerning the quality, is amazingly low, and a trademark on the individual pieces pre prevents any substitution by careless contractors. Source, Lovecraft Studies, Volume 7, Number 1, H.P. Lovecraft, S.T. Joshi. I didn't absorb that. He was quite the salesman, though, so I did get a little. August Derleth and the Cthulhu Mythos August Derleth was an American writer and anthologist. He also befriended Lovecraft and published many of his works through his company, Arkham House. Although he greatly contributed to the popularization of the author's work, after his death he is surrounded by numerous controversies. One of his most questionable decisions involved introducing the good versus evil doctrine. Derleth was a devout Catholic to the Cthulhu Mythos which contrasted with Lovecraft's view of the world and his approach to cosmic horror. As a result, the author's works are often misunderstood and misrepresented in today's culture. Okay, so kind of the view ended up getting lost in translation because this derelith lad was like, oh, there's good and there's evil. It's not just gray, just very, very, very different shades of gray. It's also worth noting that Lovecraft was never really interested in creating a mythology, and the term Cthulhu Mythos was coined by Derleth after the author left the mortal plane. Yeah? How do you do that? What the hell? Can I try that? dude died and just was like yeah yeah i'm gonna call it i'm gonna call it the mythos nice soundtrack dude this is incredibly well made especially for a free game to play this is really cool <laughs> hello shalom hello 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 what do i do Hello. Is there anything I can examine? Like that? Or perhaps that? Maybe that? <gasps> no way. A scientist. These days, the word scientist is a wildly accepted term, but at the time Dagon was published, it was subject to a wide debate. After the author used it in the story, critics pointed out that man of science was a more appropriate term to employ. He admitted in a he admitted in in defense of Dagon that if Dagon were to be reprinted, he would indeed use the phrase they suggested. Scientist was coined as an analog to artist to be used when referring to the studying of different branches of science. Yet in the 19th and early 20th century, scientific researchers in Great Britain and the United States were of the opinion that man of science, resembling the term man of letters, was only was the only proper choice. Among among other things. It was gender specific, indicating that science was an endeavor to be pursued by only one sex. The term scientist became more accepted only after World War II. Oh, really? Huh. Interesting. The amount of science started fading into obscurity as an old fashioned synonym. I would have thought that would be more older than that. World War II's. I mean, it's not. like. that recent by any means but it's pretty recent in compared in comparison to all the other shit that's gone down in history and the way this is worded yeah, I don't, I run. dumb thought <laughs> so was I was just like clicking I don't even know where I got that from. Can I click you? Hello? Nothing? Okay. I'll stop messing around. To the door! It might have been supposed to show me that. It is at night, especially when the moon is gibbous and waning, that I see the thing. I tried morphine. 
But the drug has given only transient surcease, and has drawn me into its clutches as a hopeless slave. So now, I am to end it all, having written a full account for the information or the contemptuous amusement of my fellow men. So, is this part of the story, or did dude actually die? Nothing? Elder sign. It's not showing up. I don't know if that's supposed to be happening, if it's like a hidden thing, or if the elder sign isn't showing up. Almost it did, and I just didn't see it somehow because I'm clicking too fast. Anyway. Elder Sign, at another house where people were stirring, he asked questions about the gods and whether they danced often upon Lyrian. Hmm. But the farmer and his wife would only make the Elder Sign and tell him the way to Nier and Ulthar, the dream quest of unknown Kadath, H.B. Lovecraft. Elder Sign is a protective symbol that can be found in various works of pop culture, usually represented by a five-pointed star with an eye flame symbol in its center. An eye flame? For example, in games inspired by H.P. Lovecraft's writing, it is supposed to ward away all kinds of cosmic horrors. However, this is a later version of the sign created by the author's friend, writer August Derleth. Okay, so was it... That's what I was thinking from the wording of the, the scientist prompt back when I was like, oh lol, the Cthulhu Mythos term was coined by the author, by Derleth after whatever, whatever, and left the mortal plane, after the author left the mortal plane. Was that saying that Lovecraft was the author, and then Derleth took over after Lovecraft died, and Derleth um, coined the term? Because I thought it was saying that Derleth died, and then he coined the term after he was dead of Cthulhu Mythos. But, ha, uh, maybe my reading comprehension isn't too good today. In our game, we have used the original symbol, as designed by Lovecraft, in the form of a six-pointed branch, which he sometimes included in leathers to his leathers letters to his friends that's cool so I'm gonna click you now one two three four five six. Ooh, I'm a cosmic horror scholar got an achievement Lovecraft on tobacco and alcohol Lovecraft halted tobacco that's the sentence okay Lovecraft <laughs> Lovecraft hated tobacco. I'm doing great, dude. This is awesome. Even though he used to smoke when he was 12. Nice. I mean, not nice. In order to look and feel like an adult. In his correspondence with friend Reinhard Kleiner, he claims that he quit as soon as he started wearing long pants. Cool. He also had a very strong opinion about alcohol, as evidenced by his letter to Zelia Brown, dated 13th of February, 1928. As for the matter of drinking, I have never tasted intoxicating liquor, and never intend to, having a strong aesthetic disgust at anything which blunts or coarsens the delicate natural equipoise of the evolved human intellect and imagination. Drinking excited my personal repugnance. Repugnance? 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 I'm really showing my illiteracy here. It's all right though, we can learn a few words here. Look it up. I don't have, I'm too lazy to look it up right now. I'll do it after I record, but repugnance. Hence, I don't drink. Let the herd do what they will. Interesting. I see. I'm rather in favor of prohibition, the prohibition of any one antisocial force as well as of any other. Source of the Spirit of Revision, Lovecraft's Letters to Zelia Brown, Reed Bishop, H.P. Lovecraft, Sean Branny, and Andrew Lehman, S.T. Joshi. It's a lot. Interesting. 
interesting guy. Do you need to use some coasters? God damn. Often, I ask myself if it could not all have been a pure phantasm, a mere freak of fever as I lay sun-stricken and raving in the open boat after my escape from the German man of war. This I ask myself, but ever does there come before me a hideously vivid vision in reply. I cannot think of the deep sea without shuddering at the nameless things that may at this very moment be crawling and floundering on its slimy bed, Don't worshipping anything, their dude. ancient stone idols and carving their own detestable likenesses on submarine obelisks of water-soaked granite. I dream of a day when they may rise above the billows to drag down into their reeking talons the remnants of puny, war-exhausted mankind. Of a day when the land shall sink and the dark ocean shall ascend amidst universal pandemonium. Can I click on anything? Any interesting tidbits of information? Please? The end is near. I hear a noise at the door, as of some immense slippery body lumbering against it. Damn it, he's going at it. Yeah, what do I do? Oh, click that. Oh, yeah, no, thank you, dude. Anything else I can do? Nope. Great. Great. This is awesome, dude. I hate this. Oh, I do so bad with horror. Anything. Whoop. It shall not find me. God, that hand. The window! The window! something different would have happened if I didn't click the window. Oh, and it's the... I like that. I really like that. That's so cool. That shows the whole story. Am I supposed to click? Clicky, clicky. That was really good. I really like that. I've never, um, I've never looked into anything about H.P. Lovecraft. I've always knew of him and his works, and obviously Cthulhu. Cthulhu was. I don't know why Cthulhu is so popular. I mean, like, I don't know. <laughs> when I was a kid, you know, his neighbor next door cooked some okay burgers, but. This is a really this is a really cool way to experience the stories I don't know if the books are in that old kind of language where you have to actually have to like think to decipher and take the whip out those sticky notes and figure out reread the same thing over and over again to figure out what they're saying but if that is the case I can understand why that would be hard to read but if that's not the case, then I don't know. Cool. Just read it. But either way, having it in a game format where you like click and explore all these really cool environments. And the graphics were really nice. I was surprised. Really surprised by how well this was all put together. But that's Dagon. And they got two more right now. Little glass bottle and Eldritch box. 
and whatever it tells apparently. But that shall be it for now. It's like an hour long video. I don't think I have much to edit out of this except for that time when I like coughed or something. But I don't think I will. So might do more of this. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Sayonara.